the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard krishna agree to serve as the pandav emissary to broker a peace deal with the kauravas vidu tried to discourage him but krishna wants no stones unturned to stop the war a frustrated and disappointed krishna arrived at kunti's place he paid his respects to kunti and narrated the disastrous events that took place in the palace kunti was outraged i think it is futile to make any further attempts for peace ask yudhishthir to shed off all thoughts of peace and prepare to use his might to win back his throne yudhishthir's attitude is more like a brahmin than a kshatriya he thinks more than he acts tell him Lord Brahma created the Kshatriya from the muscle of his arms. That's why a Kshatriya should always use his muscle power to resolve a dispute. Tell him, a weak and non-violent king can never control his subjects. Follow the path of your gallant ancestors and use all your strength to win over your enemy. That's what a true Kshatriya should do. How shameful it is that I being the mother of the great king Yudhishthir have to depend on the pity of others for my survival shame on such a son <laughs> Krishna tried to console her my dear aunt don't worry your days of misery are over your sons will soon become the rulers of Hastinapur and you will be the queen mother now please Let me take your leave. I have to complete a small task before I head back. Krishna left Kunti's house and asked his charioteer Satyaki to head towards Karna's house. Karna was flabbergasted to see Krishna arrive at his doorstep. He welcomed Krishna inside his house. Krishna, I am honored to have you as a guest at my humble abode. Please have a seat. Tell me what can I offer you? Krishna sat down on an ornate throne and said, "My dear Karna, I am here with a proposal. If you accept, I will have whatever you offer me. But first, listen to what I have to say." "Fair enough," said Karna as he sat next to Krishna. "Tell me what you have to say." Krishna paused for a moment and then said Karna you are well read and well versed in the scriptures you must be aware of the intricate rules and laws prescribed by the learned pandits one such law says that if an unmarried woman gets pregnant the child can either be kanin or sahora a kanin child is one who is born before the woman is married and a sahora child is the one born after marriage the man who marries such a woman is considered to be the legal father of both kanin and sahora child but karna was impatient yes i know but why are you telling me this krishna said karna You are the Kanin son of Kunti and Pandu is your legal father. Karna was shocked. He stood up and said, "Are you out of your mind? Please hear me out before making any conclusion." Your mother Kunti, when she was only a teenager, received a boon from Rishi Durvasa, a mantra that gave her the power to summon any god. and have a child from him curious and unaware of the consequences kunti summoned the sun god 
and conceived his child, you. But a child out of wedlock would have been a disaster. So when you were born, Kunti put you in a basket and let the basket afloat in the river Ganges. Fortunately, Adhirath, the charioteer, saw the basket downstream and took you home to his wife Radha. Adhirath and Radha brought you up as their own son. Karna's head was spinning. His eyes were red with rage. He looked at Krishna and said, If I heard this from someone other than you, I would have killed him the very instant for saying such an outrageous lie. You think I am lying to you? Krishna smiled. That's the problem. But, but I can't believe my ears either. Trust me, every word I say is true. You were the first son of King Pandu and you deserve to be the ruler of Hastinapur, not Yudhishthir nor Duryodhan. You tell me I am the senior most Pandava brother? Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, Sahadev are my brothers? I have the right to the throne? Karna's voice trembled as he uttered these words. Krishna stepped up to him and held his arm. Come with me, Karna. Come and join the Pandavas. When the Pandava brothers come to know of your true identity, they will be overwhelmed with joy. They will all surrender to your feet. All the kings and rulers who support the Pandavas will yield to you. Draupadi will accept you as her sixth husband. We will make you the king. Yudhishthir will be the crown prince and stand by your side. Bhim will hold the shades over your head. Nakul, Sahadev and five sons of Draupadi, the Panchals, the Vrishnis, they will all follow you. O son of Kunti, join your brothers and rule the world. Karna walked away from Krishna and looked out of the window. Krishna stood next to him and said, Karna, join the Pandavas and this war will not happen. Duryodhana would lose his will to fight and surrender to you. Millions of lives would be saved. Karna turned to Krishna and said, Yes, as per the scriptures, I am the first son of Pandu and that makes me the claimant to the Kuru throne. But I can't forget the fact that my mother Kunti abandoned me without caring for my life. It was the poor charioteer Adhirath and his wife Radha who rescued me and brought me up. And I know him as my father. He sent me to the best teachers for my education and my arms training. It is only because of my parents' blessings I am what I am today. There is nothing in this world that can make me disown them. And I cannot abandon my friend Duryodhana either. It was for him I am respected as a king and not as a mere charioteer. Duryodhan depends on me. He embarked upon this war only because he knows I will always be on his side. He expects me to fight Arjun and defeat him. No amount of riches can make me break his trust. Krishna sighed and said, Think again. My proposal would have benefited both sides. A faint smile surfaced on Karna's lips. He said, I know. I know what you say is for the good of the mankind. But I am sorry. I cannot give up my principles to become the king of the Kuru kingdom. Karna paused for a moment and then said, One more thing. Please, Keep this discussion a secret, especially from Yudhishthir. If he knows I am his elder brother, he would never accept the throne. He would hand it over to me. And if I get the throne, I would hand it over to Duryodhan. So I say, let Yudhishthir be the king, and you his advisor, and Arjun his protector. I only pray to you. Bless those who die in this war of Kurukshetra to attain the heavenly abode. Krishna stood up and said, Karna, 
I offered you the kingdom of the world but you declined to accept. The Pandavas will win for sure. Nobody can defeat them. You tell the Kuru seniors to prepare for the war. This autumn is the best time for a battle. The wind is mild, crops are abundant, and the fields are dry. A week from now, on the day of the new moon, let the war begin. Tell the kings and warriors on your side their wishes will be fulfilled. They will all die and go to heaven. Krishna turned around to leave. Karna stopped him and said, Krishna, before you leave, let me ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Why this acting, this show? You know very well that nobody can prevent this bloody war. Duryodhan, Dusashan, Shakuni or me, we are mere excuses for the inevitable. I have had horrible nightmares. I saw you holding a blood-drenched earth in your hands. You toss it over to Yudhishthir, who, while sitting on a pile of skeleton, grabs the earth and devours it. Krishna, with a stern look, said, My words had no effect on you. Hence, destruction is inevitable. Karna laughed and said, So be it. But now, give me a hug before you leave. Who knows if we'd get this chance again. Karna moved up to Krishna and wrapped his arms around him in a warm embrace. Moments later, Krishna stepped out of Karna's home and mounted his chariot. Let's go, Satyaki. We have no time to lose. Krishna's chariot sped away to the city of Upaklabhya, where the Pandavas were waiting eagerly to know about the outcome of his meeting. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudip Tabamik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.